Oh yeah. Welcome to the Don't Get Your Hopes Up podcast. I'm Josh Allen, a.k.a. Lore. Joining me is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. What's Hi. Up, sir? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> just, just by contrast. <laughs> that's, what I feel, that's what I feel like I sound like. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so I have been sick for two days, and I sound approximately <laughs> like like death. Um, uh, that intro was not him like trying. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not putting on a voice or anything. This is just. This is how bad my throat is right now. Oh, it's so upsetting because it sounds so good. <laughs> record, record like a ton of shit. Like just before, like, oh, dude, it fixes itself. Record, just, I, just say random things. By like, the say time a bunch of words. By the time we're done with this, I will not be able to talk. So I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, so uh, we haven't had a show in. Uh, in a while. A year. A year. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like a year. Yeah, seriously. Something something keeps coming up or... Yeah, like you went to GDC and then PAX and then mm-hmm. I went to Vegas and then I got sick and then we're here now. Yeah, right? Yeah, because... So that's the story of the universe. Pretty pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it sucks because like... Uh, I was thinking like, oh yeah, we could bang out a quick episode right when I get back from the PAX GDC combo and talk about all the cool stuff. Uh, and then right when I got back, I was like, I don't feel like doing shit because I had so- <laughs> when you're gone from work for a week and you lose a weekend on top of it and you go right back to work like the second you land on, you know, it was a Tuesday I came back. It was like, work doesn't stop and wait for you. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was just a flood of stuff. Uh, yeah. And then by the time, and then that was, I think that was the same weekend that you ended up going to Vegas, right? Yeah, it was just this past weekend that I went to Vegas, which was cool. Like, I went and wandered around the Strip and looked at some gambling machines. I didn't actually do any gambling, which I, I'm pretty sure means that I've failed at Vegas, but, like... I, I mean, I was there for, like, 15 years to do any gambling, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, I I guess the other part of failing at Vegas means that what happened in Vegas was I got sick and it didn't stay there, so... <laughs> You were just That's bad cool. at Vegas the whole round. I'm apparently just, yeah, complete shit at Vegas. <laughs> uh, but it was cool. It was like wait, a whole wait, blizzard. Wait, what were you guys even there for? Like, I, it's funny. It was I, just like a, like a, we'd shipped a whole bunch of products. So, uh, like between Hearthstone and Warlords of Draenor and like the Founders Pack for Heroes and everything. Um, and like announcing Overwatch at, uh, at BlizzCon. Mm-hmm. Like, there just was a ton of stuff that had happened. Yeah. So Blizzard was like, screw it. We're taking everybody out to a big old party in Vegas because it's basically the Orange County playground, regardless. Oh, and God. Yeah, I know. Like, that's, that's where people from Orange County go to do <laughs> things they wish they hadn't. Um, <laughs> and we're just going to party for a couple of days and blow off some steam. And instead, I got sick. So thanks, Blizzard. Dude, did you get sick like while you were there? Really, Blizz? No, it was like, I think I picked it up on, because it was like, I was on a bus on the way down. You were on a bus with a lot of people, yeah. Yeah, I think I picked it up on the bus ride back. On the bus ride down, I got sick, but that was because my boss fed me like 400 margaritas. So, that was, (laughs) don't, don't, don't chug margaritas on a bus. That's just a bad idea. Oh, no. Did the bus have a bathroom? It did have a bathroom, unfortunately. Um which is somehow like on a bus, which is on the ground. It's more terrifying than using the bathroom in a plane, which is like 30,000 feet in the air. <laughs> and you flush the toilet, your ears pop. <laughs> yeah. Well, more terrifying than that, huh? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's because it's because the bus is like shaking around all over the place, whereas the plane will stay like relatively smooth. Oh, God. So, like, so the stream is like going nuts. Yeah. That's yeah. Nuts. And I didn't want to sit on the thing because you yeah, bus all that, bathroom. All that, all that blizzard booty. Yeah, <laughs> who knows what's been there? I might get, I might get sick or something. I mean, obviously, obviously, you're, uh, um, obviously, it was a good thing you didn't because you could have been worse. I mean, you were right; like there were germs floating around there somewhere. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's. Uh, I saw a bunch of tweets come out and stuff like that from you guys down the being down there and like uh, someone I had tweeted the next day. Uh, I think it was like Christina Sims. She, she tweeted like so. She's all like, "Oh, thank God I didn't tweet anything last night." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so many times I've been there. You know, it's like especially like if we go out to a con or 
like a late night, you know, shizzle lore everyone stream. Yeah. You know, it's like the next morning you, I wake up like, oh my god, let me check Twitter. Did I say anything stupid? You you wake up, your phone is laying next to you in bed, not plugged in, and you're like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? Check your recent text. Check it. Check it. Check yeah. everything. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I'm, I'm glad. Where'd you guys uh, uh end up staying? Can you can you talk about it? Um, I was staying at the uh Mandalay Bay. Um. Ooh. Which was cool. Yeah. It's kind of at the, the ass end of the strip, so like mm-hmm. getting to the rest of the stuff was a bit of a walk, but it's cool. Yeah. I got my, my Fitbit daily step goal was beaten by like three times, so I did a whole bunch of walking around. That was cool. And right now, um, this is like the two weeks of spring that Vegas gets, so it should have been yeah. pretty good temperature-wise, right? Yeah, it was actually it was cooler in Vegas than it was in Orange County, mm-hmm. so that was nice. Yeah. Um, the, the, weather was, the weather was really nice. Good. Um. But yeah, it was my first time in Vegas, so I was like walking around mostly just sightseeing, like looking at the New York, New York. Uh, I'm having a heart attack. That was your first time in Vegas? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, duh. Oh, Jesus. I, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Like, I mean, it's not like you've been on the West Coast your whole life. You've been. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that makes perfect sense. Um, yeah. Like damn. took a picture in front of the MGM Grand Lion. Uh, took a picture of the Excalibur because it looks like a Disneyland castle. It totally like, does. That's exactly <laughs> what it said. Yeah, when they see the fireworks off. It's even better. Uh, I didn't. I didn't end up seeing the fireworks. Well, I, yeah, I, for like New Year's. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. There was like some sort of. I think it's the Bellagio or something that has like a big fountain thing that happens. Yeah. Oh, this is so great. It's like this Vegas virgin. I love it so much. Yeah. 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 So the um, if you ever watch Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, yeah. At the end, that's that's that pool that they're uh, oh, where right the water sprout up. They're all like sitting there and they all walk away without saying anything. Yeah. That's that's the Bellagio. Oh, uh, right fountains. Um, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty spectacular, and it's actually, I mean, probably one of the things that have stayed like cool for the longest because the Mirage for the like the Mirage is like one of the first ones to have like this outdoor type thing, uh, and it was like basically fire would come out of the pool. They have like this kind of like um, uh, it's kind of like I don't know what you'd call it, but basically just a bunch of water runoffs and waterfalls and stuff like that in the front. Um, and they had like fire, and then they had these red lights that so would just be like lava, stuff like that, like an eruption. And it was like, oh, the mirage. And they would disappear, like, whoa, so cool. And then, um, but that was like the cool thing back in the, like, the early 90s. And then uh, Treasure Island, before it became TI, uh, was they had like this pirate show, like straight up, mm. like pirates, like on the strip, you know? And so that's right. kind of, that, that started the whole, like, let's put shows like on the strip. And then, they all basically all that stuff like faded away and like changed or became something different, but the the well, Bellagio like, like stayed timeless. Isn't like the whole strip owned by the same company now or something? <laughs> yeah, there's like there's basically like two. It's like Wynn and then like the and then like the MGM uh, Caesars, uh, think New York. Yeah, there's definitely like uh, uh, one. There's like two major players down there for sure. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, you're right. Like and people had. Um, I think in, yeah, and also in oceans, like they talked about, those underground tunnels all went up one safe. You know, like, mm. I totally believe that's true because there's so yeah. many of those. A casino is owned by just like one group. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm actually heading. Ba- I I had booked a different Vegas trip to Vegas like way in advance of even finding out that Blizzard was doing this thing. Uh-huh. So I'm gonna end up going back there in probably a couple of months, and I'm gonna do a little bit more of the touristy stuff while I'm there. Oh, that's awesome. Because, like, yeah, I was like, well, I'm, I'm here with Blizzard, so I should do a bunch of hanging out with Blizzard. It'll be cool to go down there and just be able to explore and maybe poke at a slot machine or something. Mm-hmm. And you didn't? No, I didn't. I mean, it's totally fine. Like, I don't even I don't know how to play poker. Like, I have no idea. And, like, I yeah. just, I just like, within the past probably five years, learned how to properly play blackjack because apparently it's not just simply adding up cards. Um, no, you got to count You got to count them, man. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how. Yeah. I used to I used to play a lot of like fake online blackjack and roulette. Um, I don't know why roulette was something that I was so hooked on because it's pretty much bet on halves and hope you win. Pretty much, um, yeah. But blackjack was one that I used to play a ton of, and like I've uh, in the amount of time that I've played it using fake money and always ended up at some point losing absolutely everything and having to start over. I'm terrified to do it with actual money. Because I'm like, oh man, <laughs> what's going to happen is I'm going to come in here, I'll be like, I'll just play with 100 bucks, and then next thing you know, I'm out two grand or something. Mm, yeah, that happens. Yeah, what you do is like you, you win 
uh, once once you're up, right, you take like half of whatever you are up by. So like I say, if you're up by five hundred, you take like two fifty, and then like if, especially if you want to do roulette, then you just throw it down on something like on black or whatever. Um, and that way you could double or nothing, you know. But mm. you still walk away with more than what you came in with, and so it's it's yeah, you got you got to manage it because you end up on this like whole oh man, well just one more try. Just one more try. <laughs> yeah. And then once you get down to like you're even, you're like, well, I did come here I was, spend I money. was up. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm just even now. So it's kind of like starting over. <laughs> yeah. I can work my way back up again. Oh, I, can, I can do it. Good. Yep. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Cool. So that's that's good. Um, yeah. How was uh, GDC and PAX and everything? There was a lot of, a lot of shit happened at GDC and PAX. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff, man. Like... Uh, so first off, I was I was only at GDC for one, uh, for one actual floor day. No, oh, right on. But I also feel like half of GDC was also there for one floor day <laughs> because, <laughs> because I'm I was sitting on the plane uh, on Thursday. Um, the floor was up like Wednesday, Thursday, I think. Uh, yeah, Thursday I'm on the plane and I'm sitting like uh, surrounded by a bunch of dudes, you know, coming from GDC. And they were saying, like, yeah, like, everybody has to, you know, we have to work both GDC and PAX. And so they're basically flying back and yeah. forth. And it's, like, super shit. Um, but, yeah, GDC, like, uh, you know, they made the big, big announcement with, there's a couple of big announcements uh, that came out of that. Like, a, fuck, a couple. It was, like, a ton. <laughs> but uh, hardware, obviously, is always a big thing with GDC. Um, mm. But it's funny, announcements aren't always a big thing with GDC. Like, this year, it's, yeah. it, it keeps getting bigger and bigger. Nvidia, Steam, you know, it's like all these guys are just dropping all these bombs at GDC. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I was looking at the um, uh, the, the HTC Valve, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the VR thing mm-hmm. that they're working on because, well, everybody needs to be generating a a, a VR sort of oh, thing God. at this point. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's it's that's that's what it feels like. Yeah, the um, yeah. so the Vive. So they, they announced it, and um, we had a bit of a heads up that they were going to do this. So we mm. were like, not much, though. <laughs> right. So it was like, uh, I was telling um, Cody, my boss, I was like, he's like, hey, what do you have planned for? Like, what kind of appointments do you have? I was like, oh, we have a couple appointments, but we're going to be camping out at Steam trying to get in and get this hands on some of this Vive stuff. Yeah. And it was like impossible. Like, you get in, and what's interesting is, you know, you get in and... Uh, you know, all the booths are there, like all the big ass booths, like right there in the main like area in, in one of the wings. Um, but right, but right smack dab and all these big, but what usually is a show floor type setup is like a closed off uh, uh, area that has branding and stuff on the side. It's like Steam, you know, uh, Steam Link and uh, the Vive or whatever. Like they, they basically were advertising, hey, behind these walls, we're previewing this stuff to, you know, specific people. And, like, um, I tried to get in, but there was no way I could have gotten in that day. Uh, right. And I was gone the next day. So it was kind of mm. like, oh, shit. So I had to like, kind of, like, just, you know, check out the reviews and everything. But everybody, yeah. you're right, everybody's getting in on the whole. Uh, well, there's two things that people are getting in on. Uh, there's obviously VR. Yeah. Uh, and the other big thing is uh, everyone is trying to get into your living room. Mm. Like everyone, you know, it's it seems kind of like a silly thing to say because like, oh, well, we always we've had consoles. It's like, yeah, but you haven't had like this major push from Google. Uh, obviously, Roku's been there. Amazon. Uh, now you have uh, Nvidia, <laughs> like fighting yeah. for some space. Everybody is trying to get it. Obviously, Apple's been there, but it's like everyone's trying to get into your living room. That's the 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 next frontier, basically. Yeah, and you, like this is just sort of the overall. It it ties into the push of the way people are watching TV nowadays too, because like, I I don't have cable. I have two TVs. One of them is hooked up to my PlayStation. The other one is hooked up to my Chromecast, and I watch Netflix and Hulu on those. Mm-hmm. And that's just how I how I watch TV. And that's the sort of thing that companies like Google and Nvidia and Apple and so on are have, have realized now. It's like, no, we need to get it on the ground floor with this. Because this is just where TV is heading. Eventually, the cable companies are going to lose their grip on what uh, channels everybody is able to have access to. Mm-hmm. And everything will go through Hulu or Netflix or something. Um, and like, even Hulu, like, 
I, I just recently, because there was a PlayStation Plus deal on Hulu to get uh, two free months, so I was like, ah, oh, screw it, I'll give it a try again. Because I've tried it a few times in the past, and I've always had trouble finding things that I wanted to watch on it. Uh-huh. Um, but recently, I don't know if I just missed all this stuff before, or if it's new stuff that they've added. They've got a lot more, like, full seasons of stuff on there. Like, um, I found three seasons of QI, which is uh, Stephen Fry's, like, quiz show in the UK mm-hmm. that I watched a bunch of while I was in the UK. And I was like, oh my god, there's so much QI, I can watch all of this now, this is amazing. <laughs> um, and it's just, like, Hulu's doing their own original series, Netflix is doing their own original series. Like, it's just the direction that the industry is heading, so it makes perfect sense for more and more companies to want to be the, the sort of facilitator for that. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's funny, like, I would say probably three to five years ago, like, everyone I talked to who gained, uh, especially, like, in the WoW days... You know, they would tell mm. you, it's like, oh, yeah, I don't watch TV. I don't watch any TV. I don't watch any TV. But that was before yeah. we had, like, you know, obviously Netflix was around, but we didn't have awesome shows on Netflix and Hulu and, and you know, all these exclusive shows on Amazon, you know? Uh, Amazon yeah, that, that was, was when, not a thing. That was when Netflix mailed you movies. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, <laughs> five years ago, totally. And, and yeah. so it's like, you know, these people who say, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, well, I, yeah, I play games, but I don't, you know, uh, I don't watch TV. Because it's inconvenient for them to watch TV. You yeah, know? I mean, there are anybody who says I don't watch TV probably because the commercials commercials are annoying. Most mm. of the shows suck. And then, mm. you know, five years ago, DVR was like clumsy as hell. You know, yeah. it, it functioned, but it was still clumsy. Uh, and so now it's like it's super easy to watch TV. I mean, there's like sling television. Have you heard of this? Yeah. 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 That's the new like. um Like joint venture thing or whatever it is. Yeah. It's like $20 but, like, a month. Dish is doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's twenty dollars a month, and uh, I mean, if you watch a lot of sports, it's totally for you, right? Uh, yeah. But you know, they have like a bunch of channels on it, and you know they're going to be adding more. Um, and then all the all the channels themselves have their own online service, like HBO Go is coming solo, right? I uh, obviously, I think also you could go with probably like TNT or something. Like some of the other channels, you could also go like solo. Uh, yeah, CBS. And it's all a la carte. Can. Yeah, it's a la carte basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. I'm waiting for Food Network to get the get the hint and put all of their shows on their website because right now you can watch a bunch of stuff on there, but not mm-hmm. everything. Yeah, and you can watch on Sling, but Sling doesn't have a it has a rewind feature, but not like a DVR feature, which kind of sucks. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but you know, with 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 more people who like these same people who you know five years ago to be like i don't watch tv they're watching house of cards you know they're torrenting uh, uh game of thrones you know it's yeah. not like they're not watching these shows now yeah um, is it game of thrones like the most pirated show in history or <laughs> yeah something? yeah and and so targeting the the living room with all these devices that will allow you to uh, they will take all of these services that have cropped up over the past several years uh and let you game you know uh, is, I mean, it's, it's, it's slick. It works. Um, yeah. And I think it's just that there's like, we're getting into a society where the modern TV viewer increasingly getting cable TV or getting dish or something like that is just not even something that we'll consider. Like mm-hmm. I've thought about it a few times, but I'm always like, it's going to cost me like 80 bucks a month to get four channels that I probably won't watch. Um, <laughs> oh, you don't have like, cable. No, I don't. I don't, I don't have I don't have any TV service other than Hulu, Netflix, Amazon. Like that's about it. Um, there's a couple. There's a couple other that I can't think of right now. Uh, but yeah, like uh, oh, like um, CBS and stuff like that. Food Network's website. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, we're getting increasingly to a point where the like the people that grew up on the internet watching YouTube, like watching Minecraft videos on YouTube, they start to want to watch more quote unquote grown up shows. And while there's certainly some of that on YouTube, um, it hasn't really like uh, the idea of a drama series on YouTube hasn't really taken off or anything yeah, like, like, yeah. like you don't see anything along the lines of like elementary on, on YouTube nope. or game of Thrones or anything like that. So these people want to watch this stuff. Um, but the idea of getting cable, like you look at the price tag and you go, no, I'll just, I'll just download this. I know how to use the internet. Like this is, it's so easy now to, to get around having to pay for cable. 
mm-hmm. and I don't think it's because they don't want to pay for anything. I think it's just because cable is stupid overpriced. So they go, well, this is not worth it to me. But an eight dollar a month Hulu subscription, that's reasonable. Yeah. Uh, you know, twelve dollars a month or whatever it is for Netflix, that's reasonable. So as more and more things are showing up on those. Like, I pay for Amazon Prime anyway, because it's just convenient to be able to say, hey, Amazon, I would like this random weird thing that no one in history has ever heard of tomorrow. Tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, here you go. Uh, um, they they so, fight him by a drone. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, like, it's just more and more people nowadays. That the, the TV providers, like the people who are making the shows, are now starting to realize that, okay, if we want people to actually watch this stuff and to continue to make any money off of this, we need to start moving in that direction. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a huge market of, of, uh, of people, uh, well, especially gamers. If you talk specific gamers, it's like, you know, a lot of us are, we're getting old. <laughs> you know, yeah. And, and as we get old and we have kids, uh, we spend more time in the living room. Mm. Uh, I mean, you know, downstairs right now, I have the PS3, the Xbox 360. Uh, I have a full size like rack, you know, mounts uh, media PC. Uh, and then, of course, I have a Chromecast and yeah. a fucking Apple TV. You know, it's like and <laughs> my overkill. and my MacBook is down there, too. Like <laughs> <laughs> I am like I, I, I am that person. I, there's a lot of people like me. Who are spending more time in the living room for whatever reason? It could just be I had a, I got a girlfriend that wants to watch TV, you know? Yeah. And it's worth it for me to spend that time out there. It's like okay, well, so yeah. And if you're from the generation of people that has always had a PC, like eventually you upgrade your PC, you've got this old one, might as well plug it into this TV. Every mm-hmm. single TV has an HDMI input nowadays. Yep. So I can just plug it in, and now I just watch whatever is on my computer, which is everything. Everything. So. Oh yep. yeah, joy to key, control your mouse. That's what I yeah. do. Oh Load man, do whatever. Man, I have this. What's it called? Universal Remote or something like that app uh-huh. for my phone, which lets me run like uh, Unified Remote. That's what it's called. Lets me run uh, basically any sort of remote that I feel like from my phone um, on on my computer. So like I can control Windows Media Center from it. So. Um, if I have a, a whole bunch of like videos downloaded completely legally that I would like to watch, then I can just hit a button on my phone and it automatically switches over into Windows Media Center. It changes my sound output into coming this, out of my TV. It sounds like my harmony. That's awesome. But it's all within a, this. Okay. I'm looking basically, at it now. Yeah. Basically, I have a, a like a quote unquote server app that runs on my PC. Yeah. That interprets the stuff that comes through Wi-Fi from my phone. Um, I don't know if it's on iOS. It, uh, my phone is Android. Um, but like, I just, I, I, I launch the unified remote. I scroll down to where it says windows media center. I push the windows media center button three seconds later, my windows media center boots up because windows media center is smart enough to recognize that I have a TV plugged in. So it should probably boot up on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it right now. There. Yeah. It's, it's a, a Android app, uh, Apple and windows. Nice. Yeah. Highly recommended. Yeah, it's it's it looks and like you can it's do just, all sorts of stuff with it too. Like it's, it's not just Windows Media Center. Yeah, I can see that. I look at a VLC layout, and it's just like it looks like a, a Spotify layout, and so it's it it looks like it's basically built to run apps. Uh, like right now, I uh, I have a Harmony remote, which is great for managing like our you know just all of our all of our hardware. You know, mm. I swap between you know the Chromecast and the uh, and Xfinity. You know, I have a receiver too, so it's like hitting one button doo, 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 and it does it all. Uh, nice. but this is nice because it, this is like really nice because it drills down one step further. It allows you to control the apps within because once I switch over to the PC, like then I have to grab the Xbox 360 remote and I have joy to key basically running mm. the, you know, that, that manages like the mouse yeah. and, and movement and everything, which is kind of clunky. And joy to key isn't like the most reliable piece of software, but, yeah. but this actually raises a pretty good point. I think, um, one of the biggest blockers here. Uh, to getting uh, to getting that kind of flexibility because this is like a lot of power, you know. Yeah. Like all this stuff we could do, like as PC master race, you know, in the living room, like we're you're blowing minds down there. Like they're not used <laughs> to that kind of. Oh my god, everything. Uh, it's the fact that you you know you have to use so many different devices 
or yeah. our apps or whatever. And it's like, okay, so now that I switched over to Chromecast, I have to actually load up, you know, YouTube on my phone or whatever, and then stream, uh, uh, you know, that way. You know, Chromecast is just a receiver, you know, so the controller is now just there for volume and that's it. Yeah. Uh, and you know, just the Harmony remote essentially uh, eliminates a ton of remotes already. So it's like you're 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 getting these devices that are you know, and just like this app, you know, uh, unified remote, just like this app, it takes all of your app, your your uh, executables on your uh, on your on your PC, and it combines them all into one simple to use app, which is awesome. Yeah. But on the other side, you also have the Harmony do the same thing over here. So even just those two things to tell, like to show my wife who is tech savvy, right? To sit there and be like, okay, babe, so this is how you do this, and then you gotta go here, and then you gotta boot up the PC, and you gotta do this, whatever. It's like that sounds like a huge pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a fairly high barrier, and I'm hoping that, like, I'm actually surprised that stuff like this isn't. Actually, I haven't checked now that I say this, but I'm surprised that stuff like this isn't like baseline in Windows 10 or something, because like that I think is going to be the tipping point when operating systems start getting to the point where they're literally like, okay, now you can just control your OS from your phone mm -hmm. natively without having to install this extra crap. You could do a lot of stuff with Windows Glass. Um, mm, that's true. And there was actually, uh, years ago for the 360, there was uh, apps that, available that let you control it. Yeah, like the Xbox mm -hmm. Glass or whatever it was called. Yeah, and that was, I mean, that was like years ago. And so imagine building an entire, and they tacked that on to... The Xbox Live experience. So mm. I'm certain, I'm 100% certain that they're building in uh, a Windows, you know, Windows Media Center type experience uh, that interfaces with, you know, obviously it's going to interface with Windows 10 phones, uh, but also with, um, with probably like an app or something that runs on something else. Like, for example, Unified Remote, which I'm totally going to get. <laughs> now that you mentioned, I'm totally <laughs> going to get this, man. It's looked so awesome. So awesome. Holy yeah, crap. It's 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 really handy, and it just works with a whole bunch of different stuff. Mm -hmm. You can even have it be like, uh, like I I was playing Hearthstone with it from my from my couch once because you can have it just be a mouse and just mm -hmm. scroll your thumb around on your on your uh phone to move the mouse around and stuff. It was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, it's this looks really really uh awesome. Um, yeah. NVIDIA, uh, I want to talk, so I, I was at the NVIDIA, uh, event, mm. and I was spitting distance from the, uh, when they, when they actually, like, showed the, uh, the NVIDIA Shield, because they, they just use the same name for everything, yeah. but uh, the NVIDIA Shield home unit, um, I, 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 I scored front row seats, and I was like, oh, shit, front row seats, bitches, what's up? Um, <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, they did the whole event and everything, and, and, you know, they did it, they came out, they did the whole presentation and everything, and I was, I was like, this is awesome, I would totally get this, um, but I was pissed off with the way that they demoed it. Mm. Um, the thing that, with the, the, the thing they left off, and I found out the reason why later, but um, the biggest thing with the shield stuff, and you and I talked about the shield stuff, I think, on the show before, um, with the portable yeah. unit. Uh, the neat thing about it is that it will stream your PC games, you know, to the device, like to like whatever, whether it's a Shield tablets. Well, for me, I have the Shield portable unit, which is basically an Xbox 360 with a PS1 flip up LCD screen. Um, it's that's that is awesome. Uh, I could play, I could basically play whatever game I want that has any kind of controller input, uh, and anything that doesn't have controller input, I can just use Joy to Key. Uh, and have that running on the PC, and that's nice. boom done. Um, on top of that, I can also play my PS4 on it because somebody took the APK, because Android, right? So somebody took the APK that was running on the uh, Sony Xperia device or whatever. The yeah, phone. yeah, and they ripped that to work with any uh, Android device. So guess what? Now I'm playing my PS4 <laughs> on uh, on this device. On top of that, I can launch Steam Big Picture mode. So now everything is available to me on this device. Um, nice. And NVIDIA Shield for the uh, home unit, right? That's basically just a super simple way to allow me to access everything that I just described, uh, but from my TV instead of a tiny screen. Um, and that is like, that is such a huge thing. They left it out because uh, they... they well, the guy, the guy I know at Nvidia, he said they had three. They they had those three things they wanted to really kind of nail because those were new, uh, and they have they have two months, you know, beyond that to basically start hammering home all of the other stuff 
Uh, but a lot of people didn't right. know that. Like people were tweeting out, it's like, I got an awesome computer upstairs or whatever in my, in my den. Why would I, you know, why would I use this stupid thing that, you know, plays Android games? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like no, oh, you can. That's the God, it's rage, but um, <clears throat> yeah. And then uh, Steam Link is kind of the same thing, uh, mm. except that it's basically just a home Steam home streaming uh, receiving unit. That's basically all that thing is, and it's for yeah. super cheap, like fifty bucks or something. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool too. I'm I'm less interested in that one. But that, again, that's just because of the way that my setup is. Like, I've got my computer plugged into my TV already, so yeah, yeah, that's true. Not much, not much use for me. But it's cool for like if you're too lazy to run a long HDMI cable or something, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think that this like this unified remote thing, like pretty much like for someone like you, like if you have your computer within HDMI like range, your this room, this this app that you just uh, this unified remote is basically gonna solve everything. Yeah. Um. That because everything else you could because you're right there. You know, you don't need to remote it. You don't need to stream the. You know, use the onboard encoder to stream over the Wi-Fi to another point to receive a unit in your house. You have to do yeah. all that shit. You don't even need a Chromecast. Yeah, and like I have a um a Logitech uh, wireless gamepad, the F710, I think it is, mm -hmm. um, which works really well. Um, so I was like, I'm able to launch up Steam Big Picture and then use that to navigate around. And I was playing like XCOM with it, and I was playing um, a ton of Rogue Legacy with it, which was awesome. XCOM has controller support, or did mm -hmm. you map it in? It does have controller support. Oh my gosh! It's kind of janky. I had to look up um, in like the Steam user forums because uh, some of the controls are mapped backwards for stupid reasons. Oh, okay. Um, mm. So like up goes down, and like. Oh god. The what would be uh, B is A and stuff like that. But I w I I searched for uh like XCOM controller configuration or something like that and somebody found a way in the configuration files to fix it. And once I fixed it it was awesome. Like it was just like playing it on a console. It was yeah. great. And like since it's a turn-based game that's completely fine. Mhm. Mm that's the hmm shit. All right. You know what other game has controller support that really shouldn't? <laughs> uh god no what counter strike oh god <laughs> oh it yeah. has to though like uh dota is is i haven't tried it but it's flagged as controller compatible yeah so i bet they have to because of steam big picture that's stupid <laughs> <laughs> it does not work very well i've tried <laughs> i feel like we've had this discussion before but yeah like i can't imagine especially in a game like counter strike there's no way like uh, yeah there's no way you get paired up with people who don't have controllers, right? It's not like there's a controller-only room. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. That's funny. Yeah. It makes no speaking, sense. Speaking of controllers and ways <clears throat> to control things, I want to talk about this VR thing. That oh, which one? The, specifically the, the Vive, the HTC and Valve one. Ooh. Because it's pretty cool. I'm about to choke to death, so I need to mute my microphone and cough for a second. Okay, do so, that. So, go. <coughs> <laughs> I, I didn't mean that you had to cough for me. Like I was, I was gonna do the coughing myself. <laughs> so I just wanted to fill it in. <laughs> well, thank dubbing, you. I was dubbing over. <laughs> good, good work. Uh, so first off, the uh, the Vive headset um, mm. is. I mean, it looks like some crazy weird uh, goggles that you'd see in like some anime, um, but it is. It actually uh, looks so like the thing on Master Yi's head from. Uh, from League yes, of Legends. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But it's supposedly going to be a premium item. Mm. Like they're going to charge some big bucks for it. Like they've actually come out and said that it's going to be um they're actually going to make it expensive. Uh, yeah. And I'm guessing that means they're going to put quality equipment in it, you know. Yeah. Well, but, and it makes it makes sense because of the stup the, the extra stuff that it does. I don't know why I almost said the word stupid there. There's no reason for that to even be there. Good work, brain. Um <laughs> But all the extra stuff, like, it's basically a holodeck. Like, mm. it's crazy. Like, I obviously haven't had, had a, haven't had a chance to sample it myself, but, like, it does stuff like, um, like, you, you tell it how big the room you are in is, mm -hmm. and you walk around inside your room, and, like, it renders your hands holding the controllers in front of you. And, like, if you get too close to a wall, it starts to put, like, a grid that says, uh, you're going to hit a wall here if you yeah. get any closer to this. 
which is crazy. And someone's going to trip over the cable and kill themselves. <laughs> uh, no, man, it's got to be wireless. What? Come on. Yeah, I, I think the, the demos were cabled, but hopefully the, the final version is wireless. Yeah. Well, they're supposed to launch that thing somewhat soon. Mm. Like, that's not something they were going to hold on to forever. Like, this year, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Uh, uh, da, da, da. Available in partnership with HTC Spring 2015, which is right now. Yeah, by the way, <laughs> current time is Spring 2015. <laughs> uh, and, um, yeah, it's... I've, I've read good things about it. Like, really good things about yeah. the headset. So... So that's obviously a huge plus for them. But um, yeah, all the sensors they stack onto it. It's funny, they, they, they stack all these sensors on it. And if you compare it to like the Oculus, the Oculus uses, uh, obviously there's some like, um, some like gyros and stuff inside of it that sense things, I believe. But they use a webcam to kind of like a Kinect style webcam that mm -hmm. will essentially see everything else, you know? Um, yeah. All they did was they took the webcam part and built it in along with a bunch of other sensors. And so you basically yeah. have this. Well, they built like 20 of them in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you do have, you end up having this like whole, like you said, like holodeck experience. Yeah. Uh, which is sweet. Like that, oh, man. It's pretty. And I feel like the, like, because the way it works is you have the thing in your head and then also the two controllers in your, in each of your hands. Mm -hmm. And I feel like having it to where it renders your hands is so big for immersion because yeah, sure. It shows just your boring old hands holding a controller. But if you see your hands inside, like, a spaceship or something, that, like, even though you're holding this stupid controller and you're like, okay, obviously I'm using this to move around and stuff, like, that to me still feels way more immersive. The idea of it at least feels way more immersive than being able to kind of look around and there's someone else's arms that are moving around and doing stuff. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's... It's something that I wouldn't be surprised if it comes to Oculus because Oculus DK2 is now kind of old, uh, especially yeah. given that there's all these new, um, like the Morpheus and then, of course, the Vive and the countless other ones. Um, yeah, the open VR thing from Razer. I mean, come on. Yeah. Um, there's yeah, definitely... Oculus needs to get a move on. They've been around for like three years now. <laughs> well, it's not like they don't have funding. Yeah. <laughs> so I am certain that they're going to come up with something insane. Um, <clears throat> yeah. and I mean, it, it makes sense for them to like make sure that all the tech is in place and make sure that it's a completely flawless, flawless experience mm -hmm. because the, so many VR things have come out in the past that have failed catastrophically that I feel like the electronic consumer public is kind of gun shy of anything new VR, like virtual yeah. boy, anyone like, and, and, oh God. Yeah. And it has to be good. Like it, mm. it has to be good because if somebody who you know hasn't tried the VR experience since the days of the of the Virtual Boy, um, if they strap something on, they're gonna get in, try it for two seconds, and gonna be like, "No, nah, we're not ready yet," and that's it. It it doesn't matter. They're not gonna say, "Oh, well, the Morpheus sucks. So let me go try the Oculus or the Steam yeah. VR." Like they're just gonna say, "Oh no, we're not ready yet," and just be done. Uh, and that's that's why all of these all of these companies that are coming out with VR headsets, like they. They owe it to the <clears throat> to the industry to come out with something that is uh, that is viable and that you know the majority will be able to use. People are still going to get sick, right? Oh, yeah, it's going to happen. There are oh, reasons yeah. why people get sick. They're going to try to eliminate as many of those as possible. People are going to be able to strap, strap it on. They're going to be like, "Oh, I can't do this. This is crazy." Uh, but there's still a lot of people out there um, who will strap it on. They'll be like, "This is amazing." Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's. It's kind of interesting to think about, like, what, like, when you start looking at, when you, when you get VR to that point that it's absolutely amazing and, like, it feels natural and, like, you're, you, you get that sense of, oh, my God, I'm actually here. I'm actually looking around and moving around myself and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, what does that mean for the human race? Like, I know that that sounds sort of like <laughs> doomsday, like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, tinfoil hat sort of thing. But, like, think about it. If you could make a game that is Tour of Venice and sell it for $80. There are a lot of people, if it's a realistic enough experience, there are a lot of people that will buy that and just sit in a boat in the, the Venice rivers, uh, the canals, excuse me, mm -hmm. um, and just look around and be like, oh my God, I'm touring Venice right now. 
if it's realistic enough, there are so many people that are like, well, an actual trip to Venice is going to cost me thousands of dollars. This costs me a hundred. Yep. I will buy this. And now that I've seen this, uh, the actual trip maybe doesn't enough. seem as, yeah, like, sure, it's never going to be the same as actually going there. But when you're talking, when you, like, people are cheap. When you're talking about something <laughs> that's 10% of the price, then, I don't know, it's interesting. I, I suspect strongly that, like, I guarantee there's going to be, like, tour this place sort of. Uh, oh, yeah, dude sort of products that come out for these things. I mean, they had that like a long time ago, like before yeah. they, they, before VR, like the yeah. second they got, it was into, like, like just pictures and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, so it's, it's totally going to happen. Yeah. It's yeah. Damn. Like, you know, you know, when, when I came back from CES, you know, it was like, uh, the whole thing about how our kids are going to be, you know, um, basically, Using VR and a touch screen is going to be like probably the most common prim primitive. Uh, and by common primitive, I mean like, you know, it's the thing that you use the most um, that is the lowest tech, essentially. Uh, like, for example, for me, I would say common primitive in storage space would be CD, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I could say, yes, I have used <laughs> tape, <laughs> like cassette tape. For data storage before. Yes, I have. Yeah. Uh, oh, me too. So it's, yeah, so it's like one of those things. It's like, yeah, mouse and keyboard uh, will be around, um, and that's going to be the common primitive. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's, I don't think it's going to be that common. Like, if kids are growing up on this, on, on the shit that, you know, we're seeing this year. Yeah. What do well, you like think about the HoloLens? Uh, the HoloLens, I'm, I'm still, it seems too crazy for me to really actually believe that it's going to do what it does. If mm -hmm. it does do that, that's amazing. Yeah. But like, because like that would be super cool. Like you're talking to somebody and you're like, oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, it pops up some information about them that you, they probably don't want you to know or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> like, or you look at your refrigerator and it like looks and sees what you're missing. And it goes, you need eggs, you need milk and so on. That's like awesome. that sort of stuff would be super cool. Like yeah. this, this sort of like extension to my, this is exactly what I need to survive. Like I will not remember anything. I have, if I, if I, if I go without my phone, I don't know how I made it to 30 years old, uh, 31 now, actually. Um, Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. That, that was a while ago. <laughs> uh, I don't know how, like phone if, numbers, I, if, right? if I, phone numbers. Well, no, like, if I don't have my phone to keep, like, I use Google Keep religiously to keep track of stuff, because if I don't, I will forget every bit of information that goes into my head. Mm -hmm. It's just gone otherwise. Yeah, it's, it's true. I mean, it's like, yeah. uh, and, and I think I say phone numbers because that's, like, the, the, the probably the most recent common thing that people can all relate to. It's like, how many phone numbers do you remember now versus when you were, you know, a oh, teenager? Yeah. Like, I still remember my phone number from when I was like eight or something and I was living in uh, like in LA it was like, I mean, this is like, a, like obviously a long time ago. I still remember that phone number. I remember all my yeah. friends phone numbers from high school, you know, but since then it's just a blank. Like it took me a while. I just remember my wife's phone number. And the yeah. only reason why I remember it now is because half the number is the same as mine. Like she picked the number so that it'd be as close to mine, probably because she knows I would not remember it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I'm, I'm living in California for uh, just shy of two years now, and I still have a Michigan phone number because I am terrified if I ever change that thing. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm gonna do with myself. <laughs> like, I, I would rather occasionally people have to pay long distance to call me. Which, oh God! Why, like, why who? would they call me anyway? <laughs> but, a landline. Yeah. Uh, the rotary phone. Yeah, it, it's almost like. I actually kind of like it because it's punishment for someone calling me instead of texting me or emailing me or something. Because uh -huh. I hate, I hate phone calls so much. They're so inconvenient. Like being able to talk to someone directly in real time. That's so 1997. Dude, yeah. <laughs> nobody, nobody talks on the phone. Like we. So, okay. So like, um, so I, I, I've been doing some shoots recently, right? Some photography stuff. 
uh, and you know the models they're they're not my age, of course, you know, <laughs> they're they're like you know twenty, right? Like the the one I shot oh, last week, she was she was like twenty. I thought you were gonna say they were way older. Wait, well, well, I mean, I thought those were the kinds of shoots you were this, doing. This, this twenty year old, she came with her grandma, right? Who was mm, like in her okay. late fifties, and she was hot. Like I was like, what yeah. the hell? Like, anyways, so um, <laughs> she was so uh, is when you work with like with with people in this age group, right? This twenty to twenty five, like. Yeah, they don't make phone calls. It is yeah. like one hundred percent text, and sometimes it's just Snapchat, and that is how they communicate. <laughs> as if texting doesn't even exist. Yeah, and that's texting it. is so old. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like oh yeah, exactly. It's like you're yeah. using WhatsApp or you're using Snapchat, and that's pretty much how <laughs> Dude, you communicate. Remember, remember, like oh. ten years ago <laughs> when everyone had their stupid little Nextels with their two way, and it was the like, beep, and people oh. talking like it's a walkie talkie because we've somehow managed to now. take. <laughs> We've somehow managed to take a cellular phone, which is light years ahead. In fact, based on originally the walkie talkie and we've managed to turn it into a walkie talkie again. My God, that was so annoying in restaurants. There was always, always somebody in a restaurant who's like shouting at their phone because that's how they think walkie talkies work. Oh my God. Um, I, so I, yeah, I was in Vegas when like next tells were everywhere because construction oh was rampant in Vegas at the time in the nineties. And every, every fucking buddy had that stupid phone and it would be going <laughs> off nonstop. Uh, so, yes, yeah. no, I totally, I, I feel you on that. Yeah. If you didn't have a Nextel, you were basically dead. Uh, yeah. And then, yeah. Sp- like, Sprint added that just in time for everyone to go, uh, we're over this, which I thought was hilarious. That was funny. Yeah, that actually happened. <laughs> Sprint Nextel merged and it's like, oh, no one gives a shit anymore. Yeah. <laughs> now everyone just texts. It's like, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even even like at work, right? Uh, we communicate. You know, we hang out in Mumble all day, like a bunch of us. But uh, for the most part, like it's it's all text based or something or or Skype. But Skype is so convenient; it's hard to really compare that to phones. You mm. know, it's like Skype. It's like I click on your name, I call you, and we're just talking as if we're in the same room. You know, it's like yeah. For for some reason, and, and the quality is like a million times better, of course. You know, versus phone. Phone is still garbage. For yeah. some reason, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's just not. I don't know. It's well, so and, weird. And Skype, Skype also, at <laughs> least, to, at least to me, mildly suffers from the people randomly calling me without saying anything first, sort of garbage, which you do sometimes. But my parents are really bad about it. Uh, where like I'm just sitting there <laughs> at work or something, and all of a sudden my Skype starts ringing, and I'm like, what? I'm not going to answer. I only this. did that a couple times. <laughs> Dang, you you do that too. Dang, oh, come on, man. Usually I'll ping well, you, you. You usually do it for comedic effect, like I'm playing a game and streaming or something, and then you just call in just to be like, hey, I'm here. Yeah, um, oh, yeah that's true. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> but like my, my parents will, like, I, I yelled at my mom about it eventually because I was like, stop this. This is really annoying. But like, I'd just be sitting there at work, and all of a sudden my Skype starts going off, and I'm like, I'm not going to answer this. And even if I was, I'm still not going to answer this, which doesn't make any sense, but. Yeah, <laughs> they were like, they uh, they came out here to visit not too long ago, um, and uh, of course they planned a trip to Orange County without planning out anything that they wanted to do while they were here. Oh, nice, because um, you yeah. live there, so you're the you're gonna. Oh yeah, I, I know everything because there's so much to do in Orange <laughs> County, right? Um, <laughs> so like, we were um, we were trying to figure out one day like, oh, what should we do tonight, sort of thing, and I'm like, uh, I don't know, let me think about it, and then my mom like called me, it, like, so I texted my dad. And I said, what do you want to do tonight? What, do you have any ideas for plans tonight or something like that? And then he told my mom to call me but didn't say why. So she just up and called me and was like, hey. And I was like, hi. She was like, so your dad told me to call you. I'm like, okay, this, this already <laughs> is a break in the chain of communication. So I was like, okay, I'm just trying to figure out what we want to do tonight. And she's like, okay, well, do you have any ideas? And I'm like, I don't know. Let me, let me search around for some stuff. And then like... 30 seconds later, I was like, okay, we're just breathing into a phone at each other. I'm going to hang up and text <laughs> me if you think of anything. Oh, man. It's just like, this This is the wrong way to technology. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yep, man, phones. I, you know, it's funny. I get shit from my brothers and, and uh, not so much my dad, but my brothers uh, because I don't call. As a matter of fact, I have to call one of my brothers here tomorrow because he's all like, you never text or call. What am I, the pariah? And I'm like, oh my god, dude. 
He's like, <laughs> yeah, because because he he doesn't he doesn't text or do any of that stuff. It's so weird. Like I was like, how am I like your older brother by like half a decade, and like I'm more hip than you. Get get on it, dude. Come on, let's go. Get on Snapchat. <laughs> I get with it. Uh, but he's like, yeah, why don't you call anymore? But uh, yeah, no one calls. It's done. It's over. Yeah. Yeah, like I don't. I'm not very good about answering my texts or my emails either. But at least I might. <laughs> every time I get a every time I get a phone call, I immediately just go, "Nope, nope." I need to just set it to auto decline every single phone call. <laughs> I just every single one. I Leave me a message with your Skype info or your yeah. place to text, and I'll get back to you. Like I'll just make text. my I'll make my voicemail message. I don't talk on the phone. Please text me or email me at my email address, and that'll be it. <laughs> It's actually yeah. not about it. There's literally no one that could call me on my phone that I would be like, yes, I need to talk to this person. Well, I guess yeah, there was yeah. one time that my boss called me because I was late to a meeting. So maybe Ooh. I shouldn't do that. Yeah. But I can always just whitelist him. So. Yeah, because that's not a text you want to get. You know, yeah. it's like you're late to a meeting. You're like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I look at my phone 15 minutes later and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So maybe that's not a good idea. Yeah. How about this? If you have no superiors and no family, like no no elderly family. If you live you by yourself yeah. in a cabin in the mountains. <laughs> if nobody would want to call you. <laughs> if the entire world hates you. Just turn off that's your a, phone. That's a good idea. Exactly. Oh, shit. So what a, else has been going on? I'm going to title this, this podcast. Uh, I'm going to title it... Uh, we talk about games this week. Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. Um, I mean, <sighs> not much. Uh, it's just it's been, been a busy couple of weeks. It has been a super busy couple of weeks. Like there's a lot of lead time, you know, going into, you know, going to a single con, but going to double back to back. Like that's like, it's rough. Uh, yeah. Oh, but, but yeah. So, Oh yeah, I should tell you. So Boston, yeah. Uh, How how'd you do in the cold? By the way, it was not that cold. Oh yeah, it was cold, like temperature wise, and like what we walked. Uh, <laughs> which I'm sure Lindsay and Anne like hate me for it, but I made them walk back to the hotel because <laughs> because traffic was dumb. Oh and yeah, yeah. Boston is not a city that you like get a cab in. Like you take the metro or you walk. Yeah, but well, it, well, if I knew how the metro worked, so totally I would have. But coming yeah. from the convention to you know, it was like a mile, uh, and it was across a bridge. And there's only like two bridges in the area that that would cross right there. And it's just like, so what? Ha if you're not familiar with with like what happens in you know Boston, I'm sure it happens everywhere else. But whenever you get like super crazy snow, like you know levels of snow, um, and I'm talking like there were parking meters that were buried in snow. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, they, they shovel all the stuff off from the, you know, from, from the main road, but they don't, it's not like they do it all the way up to the gutters. Mm. They just, they do it up until the point to where it's somewhat convenient. You could squeeze a car and a half or something. Yeah. Yeah. So the lines, the lines that typically divide the roads, no, those don't exist. No, nope, no. Nope. Oh, yeah. When there's snow drift on the side or whatever, snow packs or mountains or whatever on the side of the roads, like people just make up their own lanes. Yeah. It's, it's the same. It it's the, the same city. in Michigan. It's the same in Michigan growing up. Like. There's just there's a road under here somewhere probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it was it was icy for sure like it's biting and it's dry it's un, it's it's like un I didn't realize how dry it would be out there uh, but I guess it kind of makes sense um mm. but yeah I I I bought I bought a jacket and it's not even like a super heavy snow jacket it was just kind of like you know kind of a uh fashionable like you know but also warm jacket whatever and it just needs to be something to break the wind really. Yes, yeah, that was the big thing. Um, and as long as you have parts of your body covered, because like my gloves, I use like my like mechanic gloves that <laughs> they're like they have like rubber padding, you know, like around the knuckles and shit. <laughs> like they're not insulated at all. Uh, oh, that's a terrible idea. And it worked fine though. Yeah. Because what do you do with your hands? You put them in your pocket. Oh, I guess that's true. And then you just walk, and it was like, uh, and it was, and it was fine. And a scarf around your face, and that's pretty much it. So, I, I, I had definitely, I had packed for layers. Like I had a bunch of sweaters and some, some hoodies, and yeah, you know, I was packed like deep. I was ready for it, and I got there, and it was while it wasn't straight blizzard season. Uh, it was the week following like a lot of snow, and it was still obviously you know uh, below freezing most of the time. Um, right. But it was. 
I mean, it was tolerable. It was really nice. I, I think it might be the, the dryness or something because I like the dry. I like dry weather in general. But like, it was nice and it was cool. Like, be, you know, being around, like, you know, um, being out there, like, in the around the snow and everything, like, you know, we don't get to see that ever. So, especially that yeah. much snow. Yeah, definitely. Like, it um, snows sometimes up your way, right? But not much. Up here? Yeah. Mm, not that I've seen. Oh, really? I don't think I've seen. I, I'm a California noob. I don't, I don't know how California works. I think it hailed once since I've been here. If it snowed mm. more in Vegas than it has out here, as far as I'm concerned. It snowed in Orange County this last winter. While really? I was in England. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I'm sure life came to a grinding halt because people don't know how to drive here when it's like 90 degrees and sunny, let alone when there's any amount of precipitation. Oh, and you know what's funny? I was actually talking to some guys who were um, from San Antonio uh, while I was at GDC. And they were going back when it was uh, really, really cold. Uh, for them, it was like 28 mm. degrees. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they said that uh, the, the news reports were saying that they were going to be shutting down schools and everything because just nobody, nobody knows how to act yeah. uh, around that. And it's kind of like, and I think a lot of people can rela- relate to this, first rain. Like first rain of the season, nobody knows how to drive. Yeah. Uh, and that's pretty much, yeah. It's like everyone's just tr- slipping all over the place and it's just, it's just silly. Um, but PAX itself was a lot of fun. Um, there was a lot of shit there, like a ton of stuff. Um, yeah, Blizzard announced some stuff, which was cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, Blizzard had a ton of shit. Like, the, basically, the 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 booths to be at, uh, were essentially Smite. Uh, mm. uh, Guild Wars Two had a booth, which I, I that was a shocker, and it was a yeah. beautiful booth. Um, it's funny because like I, I saw the booth and I was like, of course, like of course these guys like you know, when, you, when you get in Guild Wars two, it's like this is a beautiful game like art, like in terms of artistic right, uh, perspective, yeah. and like that same look they put into their booth, it was like a jungle type scene. I don't know, but um, and then of course Gigantic was a huge hit there, and then Overwatch was like bam, and everybody was lined up at Overwatch. Yeah, oh my I, God, I went that to, game is so good. I went to the booth and I'm all like, so. This is the Blizzard booth, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or is it? Or is there another booth somewhere for all the other games you guys have? It's like, no, this is it, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Overwatch is so good. I, I, I need the world to have access to Overwatch so that I can talk about Overwatch. <laughs> it's um, yeah. I mean, it, it looks really good. Uh, I didn't have an opportunity to play it. I was too busy with other shit, but um. Like I mean, it's definitely you know one of the big hits of the uh, of the event for sure. Um, mm. So so don't fuck it up. I'll do my best from my position on the WoW community team. Thank you. Yeah, just yeah. go just go down the hall, knock on some doors for us. Yeah, exactly. Tell them to say, hey, don't fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just that easy, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, it looks like a lot of fun. It like, it really is. A I lot played of fun. it at BlizzCon, and that was like the last time mm. I played it, and now it's like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if it was fun at BlizzCon, it's still fun. So, I'm pretty sure, man. Yeah. You guys didn't take the fun out of it. Yeah, um, I mean, it, you know, it's coming because Blizzard loves to nerf fun and everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was funny. I was like, uh, when I saw all the stuff that you guys were announcing there, um, like the the two new heroes. I totally called it, by the way. I totally mm-hmm. called it when the the silhouette came out uh, of the uh, uh, of I don't know the female's name. I can't remember her name. Zarya. Um, thank you. Um, when 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 that when that silhouette came out, I was like, I said in uh, I was talking to a bunch of work people in hip chat, and I was like, it's basically this but female. And what I linked was Dolph Lundgren in uh, in Rocky. <laughs> I was like, it's this but female. I bet you. I fucking bet you. Like they yeah. they they give us a silhouette because they're gonna throw us off. Like everyone's gonna be like, oh, it's some dude. It's like, nope. Yeah. It's a it's a. It's a it's a female character and it's oh, like, she's she's it's such great. a great character. Yeah, it's so awesome. It's so refreshing to have something like that in in a video game <clears throat> where she's just like I'm big and buff and mean and well not really mean like I'm and big I'm and buff and I'm just face. yeah I'm, I'm just I'm just here to punch things. Yep. It's cool. Uh, and then the um, I don't know the I can't remember the name of the character. I'm terrible with names. Jesus Christ. The McCree is the other one. Thank you, Dirty Harry. Yeah. Um, Clint Eastwood. Yeah, totally totally needed. Like it was. Uh, it was definitely a character that was like a style that was kind of missing from the roster. Yeah. 
Uh, it's cool, man. I want to see more, of course. Yeah, definitely. So hook it up when you get a chance. Yeah, <clears throat> and I, I just love how Overwatch is sort of going in that direction of we're just going to have a ton of characters and you can find the one that fits for you mm -hmm. and fits your play style in the way, or, or a few of them that fit your play style and the way that you like to play. It's just a really, really good and enjoyable way to, to play a video game, to have something that you can go, well, I don't like this character very much, but <laughs> there's another one that's, there's like 400 more to choose from. Or, you know, I kind of like this character, but it'd be nicer if it was a little bit more ranged or it was a little bit more tanky or something like that. And they can do that if they have a bunch of characters. So it's really cool. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, so, yeah. so yeah, like I said, hook it up <clears throat> when you get a chance. Yeah, I'll get. Uh, I, I'm just. I'm gonna go to the office right now and push the launch Overwatch button. That's what. Thank I'm you. Doing. <laughs> it's a big red button. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh, it's actually Reinhardt, small right? and pink. You'd never. You'd never expect it. <laughs> Reinhardt is the uh, the character that I'm just like. I'm. I'm He's the big tanky dude. Yeah. Yes. With the the rocket hammer. Mm -hmm. Because why not? <laughs> yep. That's the character I want to get back into. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. All right, dude, uh, I gotta, I gotta. Oh, that's right, I gotta go. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I have to like make up shit to talk about. You lucked out, dude. I'll just sit here and just talk about myself. No, oh, well, good. I was Not gonna sit here and just make frog noises. <laughs> that's exactly what. Oh, do it, dude. Bud. Bud. Mines. Oh, come on! Put some stank on it. I don't I don't remember how that ad goes. Bud wise or come on man, like three frogs. Alright. <laughs>